Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, website thisweekinamerica.us. Back with us on the program, Larry Auerbach. He's a psychotherapist with 20 years of professional experience, his wife of 27 years, also in the mental health field. Larry enjoys chess, horseback riding, hiking in the mountains with his wife, reading about American history. As a native of Florida, still calls the Sunshine State his home. He enjoys writing fiction books in particular. He's been with us on This Week in America. We talked about his book, Common Threads, which is available at Amazon, at uh, Book World, Barnes & Noble Online. Information, of course, at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. His latest book we're talking about on today's program, The Spirit of Red Mountain. He's a member of the Western Writers of America. He's working on his third novel, returns to his favorite setting, The Old West. And as I say, he's with us on today's show to talk about The Spirit of Red Mountain. Larry, welcome back to the program. Been looking forward to this. Great to have you with us again. Thank you very much, Rick. It's been my pleasure entirely. You know, at Common Threads, we talked about that in depth on the uh, the last program. That's available if you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, through a, our podcast channel, and it's available on, on YouTube as well. And we talked about how attached you get. It's really 24 hours a day where you're thinking about the characters. How difficult is it when the book is over with? Common Threads is done. You you sort of shut the door on that, and you go on to something else. Was it difficult leaving all that behind? Uh for a while it was, but then once I got started on a new idea, it went on the shelf, and I could leave it. I could turn it loose. Okay, so we'll forget right about that. There. But you get the information available at our website. It's an excellent read. As is the spirit of Red Mountain, sort of described as uh, a ghost story, a ghost story of retribution in modern Montana, and that's what we're talking about. Is is Montana back in what the right. winter of of nineteen sixty three. Talk about why this background, is that an area you travel frequently out there? How did the whole, because the environment out there plays such a major role in the story. Well, I've always loved the West, and I've made several pack trips out there in uh, the mountains of Montana with several different people. And it just appealed to me. It's just very, there's miles and miles of miles and miles. The mountains are very beautiful, very clean, and very well protected. If you ever saw the movie uh, Dog Souls, Last of the Dog Men, with, then the area of Montana, that part, that story plays out in what they call the Quadrangle, that is actually the Bob Marshall Wilderness, which is a million-acre wilderness preserved in western Montana. Although they shot the movie in Canada, but that's where the movie still that, yes. takes place, in western Montana. And I've been through that mountain that range several times on different pack trips and i've never seen the same thing twice it's always something new and exciting and different so i wanted to go back there and give a little touch to the place i really enjoy larry auerbach is our guest on this week in america it's a u e r b a c h the book is called the spirit of red mountain it's available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble Online, Book Quarrel. You can go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and also Larry's website. That's Larry P. is in Paul, Auerbach.com. Get all the information on Larry's books and information specifically on the spirit of Red Mountain. Let's set the stage for this, and it's always difficult when you're trying to, to talk about a novel. Don't want to give away too much, just enough to get people interested. As I mentioned, this was the winter of 1963, Tragedy on Bitterroot Mountain in Montana. Uh, it's mid-season out there, and you've what got sort of this conflict right at the beginning. You've got the hunters on one side, and you've got the skiers on the other. I took a few literary, little literary license there, because in real life you would never have that. You'd never put hunters and, mountains and skiers on the same mountain. So, but I had to take a little literary license to make the story work. Well, and you make it plausible because, okay, there's like this DMZ, you stay away from that, and the hunters, right. you stay over here, and the skiers, you stay over here, and in theory, it would work out fine. Right. But as we all know, theory doesn't work. <laughs> exactly. People don't obey theory. There's always somebody who thinks he's better than everybody else or more entitled, and that causes trouble for everyone else, and that's what happens in this story. And it's very common that when you mix alcohol with anything, things go wrong. And that's what happens. Some, one of the hunters mixes alcohol with his ego, and the result is a disaster. You know, it's interesting. Yeah. I mentioned in the, in the open to your background is, is dealing in mental health issues, and we talked about this before because your characters are so rich, and we, we sort of get into their minds, and, and we know what we're thinking, what they're thinking. 
maybe we don't understand it, but we know what they're thinking. Is that where you've drawn on all these years of, of working yes. in the mental health? Yes. I read somewhere a great writer, I think it was uh, Hemingway, uh, but James Minchin said, always write about what you know best. And that's the 20, 25 years I've been doing mental health. It's the psychotherapy of people, and that's what I know best. What's going on in the human mind? Let's talk I about some. I don't understand why. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and that's something that uh, you know we understand what they're doing, and maybe we don't understand why. As someone who deals on a daily basis with that, is that real life where you can understand why somebody did something, but you just can't rationalize it? You can. I can understand it. I don't have to like it. I don't have to agree with it. But right. I do have to understand it from their point of view. The, and no, it's the same thing with anybody doing something that seems absurd or ridiculous or reckless to someone, to other people, from the person who's doing it, from their point of view, the behavior makes sense. Well, and you've got all of that in the book, The Spirit of Red Mountain. Let's talk about some of the characters there as as much as you can. Warren Barney is a well-known, he's a world-class hunter and a, a tragic figure as well. He's got an ego six miles wide. He just and he has all this money, and that's convinced him that he can get away with anything. That money will buy him out of any trouble. It, did, it was that way in his college years, and it just kept on. So now he's in a situation where he thinks money can buy his way out of any out of any problem he's created. And he deals with a a former guide, and that's a that's an awkward relationship uh, as well. Yes, the former guide was there when the disaster happened and in some way holds himself partially responsible for it. So he has a cross to bear, and that guilt shades a lot of his behavior. And you've got a park ranger who's instrumental and sort of there to block uh, Barney when Barney tries to get a, a little carried away with his ego and, and what he thinks his expertise is. You know, all of, all of the barriers, the park ranger, and he's a very dedicated man to protecting his domain his park, the animals and the people. And I've known a few people like that who are very conscientious about what their job is, and they, the means justify the ends in a good way. I guess one of the people I copied all over after was Teddy Roosevelt, who was a very staunch conservationist and really believed very heartily that the people and government is there to serve the people. And if you ever read about Teddy's fights with the government, with the industry, this is who Mr. Barry is. Interesting. The book is The Spirit of Red Mountain. Our guest on the program, Larry Auerbach, A-U-E-R-B-A-C-H. Larry Auerbach, uh, his website, LarryPAuerbach.com. Information at our website, you can link on by going to thisweekinamerica.us. You mentioned that you you always like to... Do a story where people can't quite see what's coming, where you sort of catch them off guard a little bit, and here's something compelling, and here's a reason not to put the book down and read one more chapter before you go to bed, go to bed for the evening. And the spirit of Red Mountain is uh, is exactly like that. We've got uh, uh, adventure that, that you have in the book, and uh, and a powerful message as well. I like to think so. Uh, most of the good authors I've enjoyed who write fiction. You cannot put the book down. Clive Cussler, Robin Cook, uh, the late Robert Ludlum, all these people. When I started one of their books, I couldn't stop. I could, I'd end up finishing it in one night. I couldn't put it down. So, okay, just one more chapter, and then I'll be done. And then it was morning. I was done with the whole book. <laughs> just good writers keep you interested and keep you involved in the story. And that happens because I just when you think you know what's going to happen next, it's like, okay, it didn't quite work out that way, and I'm really anxious to see uh, how it's going to work out and what's the, what the next chapter is going to bring. This is um, uh, set, to, as I mentioned, in Montana. Talk about talk about the elk, because they're out trying to capture uh, this, this elk. Okay. Well, I've, about a year ago, I found a story article in the newspaper about a giant red elk in England that somebody had found, which I thought was vindication for my, for my idea. The elk is kind of a mystical figure. He's there. He protects, like the, he's like the guardian of the woods for the animals, and in some way he's kind of a guardian for the people, too. He has, you might say, an alter ego. Um, I don't want to give away too much, but... 
the elk has been there almost as long as the uh, the almost Simpson disaster that happened 30 years ago. I guess you could say a legendary elk. It, it almost takes on sort of a, book, a Bigfoot persona in that it's sort of larger than life character. And the elk is, is featured in the book, the, the spirit of red mountain. I want to drop too yeah. much more in specific details because I don't want to give away too much more here, but uh, uh, you talk about how the universe balances evil with good. And you hope that's a, a message that, that people that. take away. Yeah. Yes. I believe that all things even out in the end, that if you, if you do evil deeds, or bad things, that it's going to come back to you sooner or later. And the things, ha- and we all want to see the bad guy get his up, come up in the, in the movies. You know, Jack Powers and Shane. We all, we all wanted to see that happen. Uh, so it's got to, ha- it's got to come out that way. I know there's some stories that don't, but I think it's more satisfying to everybody who's involved in, with the characters if they see some justice. For the people who have suffered. The Spirit of Red Mountain is the name of the book. Red is with two Ds. The book is available at uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble online, Book World at Larry's website, Larry P, as in Paul, Auerbach, A-U-E-R-B-A-C-H.com, and information at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. There are so many people that feel like, I've got this great story in me. I just don't know how I how I go about it. And let's talk a little bit about about how you go about it that may be inspirational for, for others. Did this start with a, do you do an outline before you begin, or do you sort of let it go wherever it takes you? Well, this is going to sound very strange, but I start with the end of the book. I, I just come up with the idea how I want this to end, and then I work backwards from that. Interesting. And so there's a lot of rewriting because I'll put, put, write myself into a corner and then have to go back and fix it. And so there's a lot of rewriting that goes on in earlier chapters once I get it done. But I do try to have an outline. I try to have the, the story message or the whole concept of the story written out in front of me while I'm writing so I can make everything fit. Let's talk about the rewriting process. How difficult is that to go back over and to sort of judge what you just did? I just spent four hours writing, now going back and looking at it. How difficult is it to be objective and go back and, and make sure what you just did that day really advances the story? It's not hard at all because I read it to my wife and she tells me. Well, I was going to ask about input next. Uh, you know, is this something that you don't share until, uh, hey, hon, I just got from the publisher. Look what I've got here. But nope, this is something read, where you I, get that. As I finish the chapter, I read it to her because I don't want to get too far ahead if I'm going off in the wrong direction. So when I have a chapter finished, I read it to her. Or if I have a section I'm not sure about, I'll read it to her, and she'll give me her opinion, and then I'll go back and make my corrections. Now, when you do that, do you set aside certain time a day that you're going to do this? How does that work? Because so many people run into this. Uh, I set aside some time. I, I don't, don't feel like I don't feel creative right now. How do you go about? How do you go about I, the, I don't the process? Set time aside. And I'll think about it all day long, or for several days, and then an idea will come to me. And once I start writing, it just starts flowing out. And I may write for several hours in the evening or a little bit if I've got some downtime during the day, I'll write a while until the, the spark runs out. And then I'll stop, put it away, and wait for another idea to coalesce and then write again. If, you try and for, if I try and force it, it just doesn't feel right. Yeah, I was going to say, are there times when you're sitting there and you're thinking, okay, I might as well just get up and leave because nothing productive is going to happen in the foreseeable fu- foreseeable future here? Yeah, well, I, I won't sit down to write unless, it's, unless I've got a pretty good idea of where I'm going next. What, what p- causes me the most frustration is when I try to end a story, sometimes the characters say, no, we're not ready. And we're not done yet. There's more we have to do. And so I, I find that the chapter doesn't end the way it's supposed to, and I'm setting up a whole new chapter that I wasn't anticipating having to write. It's like the characters take over. So it's interesting, the characters, at least in your mind, they they have their voices and distinct oh, yeah. personal, real personalities. Absolutely. And they are very much alive in me. 
So they, I have to listen to them because they know best what's going on. They know best what they're doing. The new book from Larry Auerbach we're talking about is The Spirit of Red Mountain. It's available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble online, at Bookworld, his website, LarryAuerbach.com. Information at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Talk about how long this process took. The Spirit of Red Mountain, when you decided, okay, I'm, I'm going to do... This book, I've, I've got, in your case, the ending pretty well in mind. I'm going to go back and put the rest together. How long a process start to finish was The Spirit of Red Mountain? This one ran rather fast for me, about maybe 16, 18 months. Because being, as I'm working full time, I don't have every time to sit down and write when I'd like to. So I just make notes to myself, and then when I get a break, I'll sit down and go for a long spurt. But this one ran rather fast. Um, I don't like to rush. I'm not interested in rushing it just to make it done by a deadline. It's I want to tell a story. I want the story done right. I want it done the way I want to be, want to tell it. And whatever time it takes, that's how long it takes. The new book, The Spirit of Red Mountain, it's available at Amazon all across uh, the country. It's available at Larry's website, LarryPAuerbach.com. I mentioned in the beginning you're working on your third novel, returning to the uh, to the old West, the site of, of Common Threads. How are you, are you still in the process of working with that? I am up to chapter seventeen. I'm up to chapter eighteen, and I think I'm finally on the, on the end of it. I think I'm finally at the, at the last chapter. It's, it feels like it's all coming together now, and I hopefully can finish this one, this chapter, within this month, and be done with this one. Now, do you have a working title for that? It's called A Matter of Honor. Ooh. That sounds like a movie, too. We talked about the last time. that, And I can visualize that as I'm doing The Spirit of Red Mountain. It's one that just lends itself to uh, cinematography and, uh, and a great story for, uh, uh, for a movie as well. From your mouth to God's ear. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had that kind of influence to be able to do that. Uh, what does it feel like? What did it feel like the first time when you get your book and you're there and you're looking at the cover and here's my book, here's my creation and my name on it. Do you have children? Yes. Yes. What was it like for you the first time you saw I your child? I was just going to say that probably, uh, probably similar, probably a very, very similar experience. Very, except we don't give away our children. We do give away our books. <laughs> and people can yeah. buy them and they can actually go to a bookstore yeah. and buy them and you can, uh, Check it out online at Amazon, Barnes & Noble online, Bookworld. i got about a minute or so left in the program. We touched on this last time, and boy, it is so important for people who are listening, who are parents, people who are listening, who may, who may be teachers. You were inspired early on by your dad to be a reader and a teacher, Mrs. Jackson, to actually write. So they really encourage this creative spark in you at an early age. Yeah, absolutely. My father's in Red Mountain. His, his influence is in there very strongly, both in the, the creation of it and in one of the characters. Uh, Mrs. Jackson, I could not find a way to work her into this one, but I'm going to try and put her in the next one. They, Mrs. Jackson encouraged me to write. We had to do, I mentioned this last time, we had to do book reports, and I just didn't have the time. I have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, so it was very difficult to sit down and, and do that unless I was really interested in the book report. So I would make up my own books and titles. And <laughs> yeah, I love that. Present them, and she, I always got A's on those. I thought, well, I'm pretty sure. I'm and you that. thought you got away back. with it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> right up until graduation, went back to have her sign the book, and she signed it. Here's the story. Hope someday you write all these books you wrote reports on. And I thought, oh. <laughs> Well, you're working on it. Common Threads is the first book we've talked about. Again, that's in our archive. If you go to our website this week at america.us. The newest is called The Spirit of Red Mountain, Red with Two Ds. Our guest in the program has been Larry Auerbach, A-U-E-R-B-A-C-H. Uh, again, The Spirit of Red Mountain. His website is LarryPAuerbach.com. Books available at Amazon Book World, Barnes & Noble Online, and, of course, information available at our website, this week at America.us. Larry, it's been a pleasure to have you on the program. We will stay in touch and, and get you back you when the when the new book is ready to go. Love to have you back to talk about it. It's my pleasure, Rick. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. You're listening to This Week in America, website thisweekinamerica.us.